nominal and effective interest rates. So this is what we're going to talk about today, nominal and effective interest rates. So when we talk about nominal interest rates, we're really talking about that yearly interest rate, that interest rate per annum. And whenever you see you know, an advertisement for a home loan or a credit card, they're always talking that per annum interest rate. That's the nominal interest rate. However, all of those you know, loans and credit cards and, and bank accounts, everything, they very rarely actually calculate interest yearly. They calculate it or do have their compounding period, you know, at, you know, very different times. So my credit card, it calculates interest on what I owe every month. Same with my home loan. They calculate that every month. My bank accounts, they might do it every six months. So it's, depends on your product. So coming into this, we make some assumptions, all right, that we have 12 equal months each year. So we're not taking into account that some months are 30 or 31 days. We're just going to say 12 equal months. That we have four quarters every year. In other words, a quarter is three months that we have 26 fortnights in a year. Now a fortnight is two weeks. Now this is a very sort of British and Australian and New Zealand um, saying, of a fortnight. Americans don't use the phrase fortnight, but we do. And um, you know, a lot of, a lot of um, mortgages and things, they'll have you making payments fortnightly so every two weeks so that's something you should be com um, become comfortable with but anyway we have 26 fortnights every two weeks in a year oh and by the way we get paid a lot of places get paid fortnightly every two weeks so this is something that's very much in the um, lexicon in the language of australians so 52 weeks in a year we're just assuming that they are 52 weeks of equal length and we say 365 days in a year. Now, technically, there's 365.25 days in a year and then every four years we have 366, but we're going to ignore leap years for the sake of further maths, okay? So these are the assumptions that we have for further maths. All right, so effective interest rates is what we're going to be really learning about today. Nominal is you know, what an interest rate is if it's calculated per annum. But we've got to think about, well, that doesn't happen very much. We've got to think about the effective interest rate. What is it effectively? So let's start looking at these examples. So a loan has an interest rate of 4.5% per annum. What is this interest rate as a monthly rate? So monthly, we're getting charged 0.375% per month. Fortnightly, you can see I've divided it by 26. 0.173% or quarterly 1.125%. So you know, that's you know, spreading that interest, that 4.5% interest over the whole year. So that over the year we get up to that 4.5% per annum. So when the interest is calculated more frequently than yearly, so more often than yearly, the value of the investment at the end of the year is greater than if it was only calculated yearly. Have a think about that. With compounding interest, say if it was being calculated monthly on your bank account. So you know, one month you've earned a little bit of interest that is added to your 
savings and then the next month your savings plus the interest from the previous month is all calculated together to earn that interest and then guess what you're going to earn a little bit more interest in month two than what you did in month one okay so your investment is going to grow more if your calcu if your interest is calculated more often so the more often interest is calculated the greater the value of the investment will be okay so you might want to sit there and you know fiddle with your calculator a little bit to prove this but yes this is what happens this is why our mortgages uh, have our interest rates calculated monthly as well so this means the effective annual interest rate is higher than the stated annual interest rate. Okay, I'll say that again. The effective annual interest rate is higher than the stated annual interest rate. What that means is effectively over the year, you've earned, it's like having a higher interest rate. If we had that, you know, 4.5 percent per annum over the you know as our nominal interest rate if we were calculating interest monthly on it we're going to be earning more than if we we're just getting it calculated in a year so effectively it's like getting a higher per annum interest rate now we're going to go through some examples to look at that so we want to compare different compounding periods and interest rates we use our effective interest rate to do that comparisons because that shows the value of the investment after one year of that compounding periods so you'll see out there lots of different home loans and um, and investment accounts with different compounding periods and different interest rates you want to find a way to compare them we do that using effective interest rates so there is an equation to work it out a formula but yes our CAS does do it as well so what it is it's our nominal effective interest rate per annum and we're working out the effective interest rate per annum and ends the number of times the interest compounds each year so there's the formula there but yes we can do it on our calculator as well but first off I've taken this example from the book because it's set out quite well let's talk about this and go through it slowly we've invested $5,000 our nominal interest rate is 4.8 percent per annum okay 4.8 percent per annum so here it's been set out for the 12 months of the year so if we invested that five thousand dollars per annum sorry that five thousand dollars and we're earning 4.8 percent per annum if they're only calculating it yearly at the end of the year we would have $5,240 and we would have earned $240. Taking that same $5,000, but this time it's compounding quarterly. So that's 1.2% per quarter. So after three months, we get 1.2, we calculate, we compound it with that 1.2 percent we've earned 60 dollars in that three months then in the next quarter we've earned you know 60 dollars and 72 cents to bring us up to five thousand one hundred twenty dollars and 72 cents we've earned another 62 dollars roughly and then at the end of the year at the end of the fourth quarter of earning We've got in our bank account $5,244.35. So we've earned 
$244.35. So $4.35 more than what we did if we're just you know, calculating the interest once a year. Now you might go, oh, $4.35, that's not heaps. But if you had more money in there, it's, you know, it's, you know, we'll be earning more interest. But also you go, oh, an extra $4.35, that's a coffee. And yeah, that's that little bit more that you are earning. But also you've got to think about it if you are, if the $5,000 is what you're owing, you are owing $4.35 more. Okay. So in this last one here, where the compounding period is monthly. So we are calculating the interest monthly. So you can see we're starting with the same $5,000 and we're earning a bit of interest each and every month. And you can see the amount of interest earned goes up each and every month because of the compounding nature of it. So at the end of the 12 months, we end up with $5,245.35. So we've earned $245.35. So if that you can see the difference there in calculating your interest at different compounding periods, you can earn you know, a bit more. So what this is saying is this is 4.8%. So effectively, our per annum interest rate is for the quarterly is 4.89% per annum. And for monthly, is 4.91%. So if you want to have a look at that, getting out my CAS, our interest earned was 235, sorry, $244.35 out of 5,000. Over the year, you can see that's 0 0.04887, so that's 4.89%. Um, so $245.35 divided by 5,000, 0 0.04907, so that's 4.91% over the year effective interest rate. So that's the difference that we've made here just by changing how often that interest is getting calculated. So the effective interest earned on the investment depends on the number of compounding periods. Okay. So Ray has two choices for investing $10,000. Option A, 7% per annum compounding fortnightly or option B, 7% per annum compounding monthly which option should she choose? So to really do that comparison, we want to calculate the effective interest rates for each option. That way we are comparing the two options over the same time period, because otherwise it, it gets confusing. Okay, so here I've done it all worked out using the formula. So option one, our rate is 7%, our compounding periods was 26, so our effective interest rate is 7.24%. Option B, we've got 12 compounding periods, the rate's the same there. Our effective interest rate ends up being 7.24%. 
7.23%. Now, as Ray is investing, meaning she's wanting to earn interest, you know, she should invest in option A as she will earn more. But if this was a loan, say, and she was borrowing this, she would want option B, wouldn't she? Could she'd incur slightly less interest. So she'd earn, so she'd owe a little bit less. So increasing the number of compounds per year will increase the total interest earned or paid. Keep that in mind. So yes, we can also use our CAS functions and I can do that on my CAS here on my computer. But I've also got it printed out for you. It's under the um, finance option. There's interest conversions, effective interest rates. You can then, you can also type it in by just writing EFF. You're putting that nominal effective interest rate and then how many compounding periods there are. So you can see it there and I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. So first off, I'll go menu, finance, interest conversion, nominal and effective interest rate. So you can do go between the both there. So effective interest rates here it was 4.5%. And if we're wanting the monthly, I put in 12 there, hit enter, and yep, 4.59% effectively per year. Now I could also just type EFF for effective 4.5, and let's say we're going to have it fortnightly. 26 and enter that's 4.59872 so that's 4.60 percent okay so that little bit higher okay so you need to think about this and yeah use your CAS calculator to calculate those um, effective interest rates it's a bit quicker but when we're comparing um, loans or investments with different interest rates and compounding periods, use effective interest rates. And we'll see some more examples of that in our past exam questions.